Hey there everybody and welcome back. So this is going to be a series on game development and we're going to design a pretty cool game. So everybody is excited and that is a good news. So let's get started and I received a lot of questions about what about the Windows users, how we are going to follow this series. So uh, let me clear up a lot of things. The one thing that you require for this development is Xcode. Now Xcode is totally free but only for, for the Mac users. And in case you are looking for any additional Xcode or latest one, usually you find it on the developers.apple.com, a very familiar site for all the developers. So it's available on the, X, on the App Store. And I have already got the latest version of the Xcode. And let me just show you, it's Xcode 2.1, which is the latest build of the Xcode. So this is the first screen that you'll be seeing for the Xcode and you won't be seeing the right part because these are some of the apps that I have already built up. But no, we are not gonna be building up app. So let's go there. Now, a lot of people asked me the question that, hey, what about if we are not on a Mac? Now, if you're not on a Mac, first of all, you're gonna face a few problems, but let's clarify that on the very first go. So a lot of people said that yes, uh, entire OS can be used as a virtual machine and virtual box and entire OS X can be installed on a Windows using virtualization. Now, I don't disagree with that. Yes, it's completely possible. You may find hundreds and hundreds of tutorial doing Hackintosh and stuff, but do I really recommend that option for development of the Xcode or game in the Sprite Kit? No, at least not. Personally, that's my personal preferences because eventually with the time you'll face a lot of problems like generating certificates and, and tons of others like that. And I believe that somebody is learning game development or app development on Xcode 8 or iOS 10, he's pretty much serious about getting started with the app development. So definitely he wants to launch the app in the App Store. I won't deny that it's not possible with the Hackintosh, but it's pretty tough and uh, I would say it's a wastage of your time. So in fact, I do recommend if you are very serious about it, go ahead, buy a Mac mini and it's almost with the cost of a compute or a laptop, general laptop, it's much more cheaper than the Mac, MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or just like that. And you can do full stuff, full fledged stuff on that. But again, if you just want to give it a try, there is a great option, a Mac in cloud. And at the very first time when I was not pretty much serious and I was looking to get started in iOS development, I, I used this site. And in fact, uh, one of my close friends used it still now. They have got a pretty affordable option, $1 per hour. And let's just say you spend uh, two hours a day, uh, $2 for a day for uh, using Xcode and all the Mac application, then I think this is, this is a pretty good option for you. And later on, if you realize that, hey, uh, I'm much more serious and I want to go with that, I definitely would say go ahead, buy a Mac mini or maybe a Mac machine. You can also buy some uh, used Mac as well. Uh, there's no problem with that, but make sure that it runs the Xcode 8. So it should be the latest updated one. Okay, so right now I do recommend highly to go for the Mac in cloud. As if you are on a Windows user, they, they are pretty solid and they give you, uh, they don't give you the root access, but again, you don't need that. You just need an Xcode and that's it. So they have pretty good. And if you look at the features, they do pretty good features. SDK for the Xcode and pretty much all the developers use them and I love them. So this is all about for the Windows users, but again, I didn't dedicate this series for the Windows users. It's, it would be a little bit Mac oriented. Windows users, I'll come up for you with another series later on maybe. So let's get started with the Xcode. And in this video, we will have a quick tour of the Xcode. So this is the very first screen that you'll be seeing on the Xcode and I hope that many of you might be familiar with that. In case not, let's have a quick Xcode tour. So I'm gonna do a Xcode project and there we go. You can see we got a lot of project here. We can build single view application, which is majorly oriented for the app development, but we can go for the master detail, your Gmail look like application or page based, tab based, sticker pack, which is pretty much fun and easy. But right now we're gonna focus on the game. So let's just click on the next. So we want to design a game. And of course the game technology is gonna be Sprite Kit. There are others as well like Metal, OpenGL, but no, we are gonna go for the Sprite Kit in this case. And it's gonna be a simple iPhone. Rest of the stuff really are same. So what I'll be doing, I'll, I'll be creating a new folder on my desktop and I'll be calling it as simply, oops. Let me just hit enter there and I'll call this as game dev and I'll be keeping everything here. So uh, let's call this as simply game test and uh, let's go with that game test, looks nice. And uh, I think everything is pretty solid. Make sure it says Swift, otherwise it's no use for us. 
and we don't need any unit test or anything. I like to keep my desktop clean. So game dev and I'm gonna be saving that. I won't be creating any Git repositories now, but in case you are familiar with my other series and bootcamp, uh, source tree is what I recommend for uploading things on the GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever you are using. But you should definitely use some of them. And create, and uh, there we go. So this is our very first. I would be changing this to, let's just say iPhone 7. And uh, now it's doing, signing is not gonna be good for me. I haven't signed my phone yet. And I think that's good. Now let's just go on a few files here. So we can see a lot of files are there and some of them might be a little bit different than what you might be used to. So first of all, this guy, the hello world is, is pretty big actually. We have gone, got some actions, which is empty, games in Swift, and we'll be talking about what each this file is, what are these so many functions here. But again, believe me, it's it's much more easier than it, what it looks like. Here we go, our main storyboard. And uh, we won't be doing much things here, but again, uh, we'll be talking about. So right now, let me give you a quick tour of the Xcode. So most of you might be aware of the panels here. These are just to close and uh, open these guys here and I like them and make sure you have them as well. And uh, this uh, bottom menu actually changes quite a lot based on what you have selected here. Like for example, if I go in the scene kit, it just changes with the sprites, lights, label, camera, and all the game related stuff. But on the main storyboard, it changes a little bit like view controller, table view controller, buttons, text, just like that. And we'll be working most of the time in the game SKS or the game scene. And apart from that, here we got a few options as well. And uh, these options again do change. Make sure that you have a quick look on them in case you are uh, running this for the very first time. So right now I have got iPhone 7 as selected and I'll run this simulator. In case you are not aware what the simulator is, it's a virtual iPhone 7 and all your game and everything will be tested on that. Now, my machine is a little bit faster it's having a load of gigabytes of RAM. That's why it's loading quite quickly. In your case, it might be a little bit slower. So you need to have a little bit patience. Okay, so this is what we have got. We can change the labels here, hello world and everything. Uh, and we'll be doing that quite a lot. And most of the time you don't want to change it from here. You want to change it from this panel. And uh, hello label and hello world and everything should be changed from here mostly. So we'll be working on that. Right now our simulator is loading. It's not that much fast as I was expecting, but yes, this is the first time it's loading up. From the next of the videos, I'll be keep loading that up in the advance. So there we go. And why it's taking so much of the time. There we go. Our game is getting started for the very first time. Now it will be just loading up and everything. So there we go, our nice hello world. And if I click on that, you can see it changes and this is the very first game you have designed without even writing a single line of code. And you can see at the bottom, there are some nodes. There are some FPS going on and notice it changes quite a lot. So this is all what we'll be studying here. And this is pretty easy, pretty much fun. And this is a fun game to play around for the very first time. You can click it again and again and can See that how this pops up and we'll be seeing all these effects. This is so nice. If you are watching it for the very first time, then I'm pretty sure you're gonna play it for some time. And by the way, command and your arrow key is responsible for tilting it down onto the landscape mode and you can get back there. Okay, let's just stop that. And I would say that was a pretty much good start. Within no time, we were able to print out the hello world. And uh, I know we haven't touched a code or we haven't understood every, anything yet, but hey, that's a good start. You have launched your very first screen. You have created a project. I would say that's a good start. And I'll catch you up in the next video where we'll be talking a little bit more about in depth and uh, actually what's happening at the backend. So I'll catch you up in the next video.